What is going on, people? It's Matt from Liquid Loans. Hope you're having a good Thursday. Thought I'd jump on tonight for a cheeky solo live one, a little, a little live stream on my own, a quickie. Oh, dirty mind. Get your mind out of the gutter. Thought I'd jump on and we're going to talk about obviously never selling the core tenant of liquid loans and also two coins that I never want to sell. But before we get into that, I just want to say a shout out to the chat. I see Hexicats in the chat. What's up? Buffo on the beat. Good afternoon, fam. There we go. Good to see that the hashtag never selling crew are here. So today, um, the markets are looking rather choppy. Bitcoin and Ethereum had a pump yesterday and I've come back down. Everything's looking, you know, Bitcoin can't break over that $40,000 mark, can it? And it's looking a little bit choppy. So surprise, surprise, it gets it hits its head on that $40,000 mark and then comes back down again. Hex is in the green though. Hex is uh, 25% up. So it's nice to see something in the Richard Hart ecosystem. Oh, and Hedron too have both been pumping. But that's good to see that, uh, yeah, something in the Richard Hart ecosystem is uh, starting to be in the green as everything else goes into the red. Another update on the sacrifice phase is we're at around $45,420,000 at the moment. So we are nearly three weeks into the sacrifice phase. And remember, even though the bonding curve gets worse by 5% every single day, we've got the 5%, you can lock up your coins and increase your coin count by 5%. So you can claw back any uh, lost points you would have gotten in the first 10 days by adding um, a day or two or three or five or whatever up to, up to sorry, a month up to 24 months. So you can lock up from one month to 24 months and get 5% extra on every month you lock up. On your last month, you'll get 12%. So in total, if you locked up for 24 months, you get a 2.5x on your coin count. So for anyone who hasn't sacrificed yet, you can still claw back any lost points from the first 10 days by locking up for longer. How you do that is how you, you um, do that by specifying on your sacrifice decimal point and then putting the amount of months from one to 24. Anything over 24 is null and void. So that's where we're at at the moment, $45,419,888 last time I checked. A lot of people believing in stable coins, a lot of people believing in true DeFi, as we see with other protocols, other stable coins that, that, that are in the market, that, you know, are fractionally reserved, are centralized admin keys, obviously liquid loans and USDL is the complete opposite of that. True DeFi, no admin keys immutable community bank run by the people for the people. So if you do want any more info on the sacrifice phase, guys, do head over to thesacrifice.io. Don't forget that, like I said, you can also lock up your tokens from one to 24 months to claw back any missed points. Let me just jump into the chat and see who else is here. We've got uh, Hex McKenzie saying, yo, yo, loan chads. Yeah, we're loan chads. Just kind of like, uh, I like to watch uh, Jenkins, Chad Jenkins, who's going to be coming on the stream hopefully next week. We're going to be talking about Pulse Chain, the markets, and all that good stuff. So a lot of people here in the chat. Evening, Red Squirrel. Evening to all our uh, Lonians. Hexy Cat, my man in the chat helping out as always. So uh, 34974 Custom says, what is... The sacrifice amount inflation adjusted against the fiat USD, like right now, like right now. Uh, you need to write in English so I can actually understand what you're talking about. What is the sacrifice amount inflation adjusted against the fiat USD? Well, it's stablecoin. So whatever the inflation is, and as long as the stable coins are staying stable, I guess the inflation will be the same. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Hex Fetty. We've got Rigged, who is a first day sacker, and we've also got Sensei Dozy. What's up, Matt? Hashtag never sell cartel. Exactly. Hashtag never sell cartel. So what I wanted to talk about today is something that came up in a stream between me and Christian, our CEO, in a chat we did a few, probably a few weeks ago now. And obviously, we know that liquid loans is about never selling your pulse. And why would you want to never sell your pulse? Well, if pulse does anything like Ethereum does and there's no reason why it can't, you know, it's a cheaper, faster, more efficient 
version, more environmentally friendly version of Ethereum, why would you ever want to sell that asset? The rich people in the world don't sell their assets, right? They collateralize them, borrow against them, hold on to that asset while it goes up and to the right and still gets liquidity. So I'm sure a lot of you know that already. So Pulse is one token that we that you never want to sell. The other token is the loan token. Now, why would you never want to sell that? Well, me and Jesse have been screaming this from the rooftops for quite a while now. The loan token, of course, you can buy and sell it. You can trade it on a DEX or whatever. But the loan token really is about, it's a staking token. So when you stake the loan token in the staking pool, that is the fee generating token of the whole system. Anytime somebody redeems USDL for Pulse or opens a new vault and mint themselves USDL, there's a fee. And that fee goes to the loan stakers. So the two coins, in my opinion, that I never want to sell, of course, the Liquid Loans protocol was developed by the founders because they wanted to hold on to their Pulse forever. And they saw Liquidity, how they how they were doing it on Ethereum, and they bring that over to Pulse Chain. So great, we can we never have to sell our Pulse, and as long as you stay safely collateralized, you can hold them to your Pulse. That's number one, in my opinion. Number two is that loan token, that what have me and Jesse called it, that timeless T share, right? There's no lockup amount in the loan staking pool, and proportional to how big your size is in the loan staking pool. You're collecting fees day in, day out, right? That's working for you. Whether you're eating, sleeping, working on a holiday, in the gym, you've got an employee working for you collecting those fees. Why would you want to sell your golden goose? Just like Hex, right? Another coin that you can lock up and stake. So those are the two coins that, in my opinion, I never want to sell. And Christian reiterated the same thing. Pulse and the loan token. And of course, you know, we're in this whole new ecosystem, the Pulse Chain ecosystem. And there are lots of good projects, no doubt, popping up and stuff. But at the moment, hashtag never selling for me is about Pulse, of course, but it's also about the loan token. And, you know, the core function of the Liquid Loans protocol is to never sell your Pulse. We know that, but there's more to it. There's a stability pool where you can park some stable coin. I did a great stream with Just Hodl a few days ago, and we were talking about diversifying our portfolio. And he, he actually brung this up. And that's what I was thinking at the same time. I love crypto. I don't really like to hold much fiat apart from paying bills and, you know, just the basic necessities. But of course, if you're always buying uh, volatile assets that go up and down, your net worth can go up a lot and go down a lot. So it is good, in my opinion, for me anyway, to keep some in stable coins, but you also want to be earning yield on that. How do you do that in the liquid loans protocol? You park your stable coin in the stability pool and you get rewarded any pulse from liquidated vaults that spread proportional to the stability pool. And you're also rewarded by the loan token, an incentive for being in the stability pool. You park that into the loan staking pool and you are generating fees. So just to reiterate that, you have got two tokens, in my opinion, are just golden gooses. You've got pulse, which if it does anything like Ethereum, if you sacrificed or got in early, hodl, Use the liquid loans protocol to hold and still get liquidity. And as long as you're safely collateralized, looking at some of the people, some of the liquid loans admins who have got some great um, charts and, and um, theories on, on how to use, you know, protocols on how to use it in different times. Haunted always suggests being over a thousand percent collateralized. Obviously, Hexicat's got one, Hodpool's got one, Red Squirrel's got one. There's all different ways to do this, but by saying safely collateralized, you're always going to hold onto your pulse. And by getting the loan token, either through sacrificing, which obviously um, you can't expect anything in return, but you may be airdropped a token of no value. If you stuck that into the staking pool and then started earning those, earning that, that token would probably appreciate a lot in price. Now, I don't intend on ever selling it, but if you have a token where you can stick it in a staking pool and generate fees and earn passive income, that's also, also going to be worth a lot. But really, why is that going to be worth a lot? Because you have something, like I said, parked in the staking pool, generating fees for you all the time. So those two tokens, I'm super excited about. Everyone's excited about Pulse Chain, obviously. Never selling, hashtag never selling with liquid loans. I'm also hashtag never selling my loan tokens because they're going to be in the staking pool and collecting those fees. If someone opens a loan, I get a bit of that fee. If somebody redeems their Pulse for USDL, I get a bit of that fee. And so do you, and so does everybody else who has parked their loan tokens into the staking pool. So mind-blowing. Let's have a look at some of the comments and see what's going on. Will we be able to see liquid loans in Testnet B2.5? 
we don't know that yet because we don't know Richard says something about 2.5 or 3 and obviously we need him to confirm what's actually going to happen with that. Um, I saw, I watched his live stream, was it yesterday or the day before, where he's talking about if he doesn't know if it's 2.5 or 3. But obviously behind the scenes, things are getting done. And like we said before, anything's released, there'll be two audits, it'll be made public. So nothing to worry about. But I'll, I'll have to check with Jexa, who's... Uh, been showing some of his stuff on his channel behind the scenes and how things are working but not to worry as soon as we know you guys will know too and montreal is in the house ian says can you elaborate more on what an algorithmic stable coin is right so algorithmically you can always because of the algorithm in the system and the way the code works in the liquid loans protocol you can always redeem one usdl for one dollars worth of pulse compared to a fiat backed stable coin like um, USDT or USDC, which claim that they have real dollars in the bank backing that. Obviously, we don't know. That's all on trust. You don't have to do that with liquid loans because the algorithm, the stable coins pegged. So you can always come back into the system at any time and redeem one USDL for $1 worth of pulse. And there'll be some arbitrage opportunities there, and I'm sure people will do that. And that actually helps bring the peg back if it does fall below that $1 peg. So basically, it's pegged by an algorithm algorithm through the code in the system. Uh, New Hexaco True, what is the plan for release? How soon after Pulse launch? So we've always said that we're not going to release straight away. Obviously, the markets uh, will be quite volatile, especially when a new blockchain goes live. So we're looking at around a month after Pulse Chain goes live, then Liquid Loans will go live too. Obviously, it could be a little bit uh, sooner, it could be a little bit less. Software, as we've seen with Richard, can be tricky and doesn't go to schedule. Obviously, we're all waiting for Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain's the substrate, Pulse Chain's the blockchain. So without that, no project can exist on there. But around a month, give or take. But again, as soon as we know, we will let you guys know. Frank Media is never selling, baby, with some profanities in there. Um, Never sell, never sell, put your assets to work. Exactly, exactly. We want to get out of that middle class mindset where it's just like nine to five, get my money and then go and spend it. We want to obviously work hard, get economic energy because when you work and you get paid, that's that's energy right there, right? You've expended energy to work, go to work, whatever you do, whether you're a teacher or a bus driver or a lecturer or whatever, right? Or a personal trainer, you've had to go and expend energy and you've been rewarded in economic energy. Now, what are you going to do with that economic energy? Are you? Of course, we have to spend some money on bills, on living, on food, on groceries, of course. But are you frittering away the rest of it like a lot of the middle class do and you know the working class it's just the mindset where the rich and the super wealthy they take the money they earn and they put it to they, they put it to work for them right they buy assets that appreciate in value real estate stock now we have crypto and as richard hart says it would be wise to learn how crypto works because it's the fastest growing asset class ever so putting your assets to work the loan token well for example let's go back to the beginning let's say you've got some pulse you collateralize that, you get some USDL, you stick that in the staking pool, you start earning more pulse from liquidated vaults, you earn the loan token, you stick that in the loan staking pool, you get paid more USDL and pulse from all the fees. And it's just a e never ending cycle. If you've seen the flow chart of liquid loans, and that's obviously one protocol, you have, you can also stake your pulse as a valid with the validators and get some of the fees there. You've, if you've got some pulse X, you can stake that too. If you've got hex, you can stake that too. make your money work for you because you want residual income, you want passive income coming in. So at one point, that balance of you, you're working here hard, and you've got a small amount of maybe crypto or digital assets, and you keep growing that and put it to work for you. And before you know it, you know, after a few years, who knows, depending on how much you work and how clever you are with your money, you want that to, to, to outgrow here. So you don't have to work, hopefully, or you can work less or do what you want with your life and get paid residual income. And as we've seen that with a lot of, lot of OGs in the Hex community, obviously their stakes are coming out, they restake the principal and they sell the interest. Very, very clever. Red Squirrel says maybe a month after mainnet. That is right. Uh, Millie says smash the likes. Absolutely smash the likes, guys, and share the vid. Uh, Staking hex pays you out in hex to dump the price in everyone's big heads. Negative externality here at Liquid Loans, we pay out in USDL, which you could buy hex and pump on everyone's heads. So that is one positive with 
especially staking the loan token, you're not actually getting paid the loan token where other protocols, yes, you have to sell some of your bags to um, get value. With a loan token or even with taking a loan, you're getting, uh, you're not selling your pulse, are you? You're collateralizing it and getting USDL. Yeah, then you can, if you like Hex, go and buy Hex. If you like Pulse or PulseX, go and buy more of that. Again, go to the Liquid Loans Telegram group, t.me forward slash Liquid Loans and find out uh, a lot of the people's protocols and, and strategies for using um, the Liquid Loans protocol, Haunted, Hot Pro, Red Squirrel, Hexicat. Or you, with a loan token, again, with a loan token, you're not making more loan token. You're not being paid in that. You're being paid the fees in the system. So you won't be uh, dumping the loan token on yourself to acquire value. So again, all these protocols are great, but yeah, I like I like a protocol where you don't have to sell down the actual native token you're staking to gain any liquidity or to gain any value. If we get loan token, Arnold says, if we get loan token for the stability pool, it's the loan token inflationary. You get loan token if you're providing stability in the stability pool, yes. And then you can stick that loan token into the staking pool and the loan token is not inflationary. Everything will be obviously minted on day one. And I guess over time it will be deflationary because I'm sure some people will lose their keys. Um, loan tokens will be lost here and there. But no, the loan token is not inflationary. The whole supply will be minted from day one. Fairly Local says, super excited for Liquid Loans, nothing but positive for Pulse. Look at what Hedron is doing for Hex already. The future looks bright indeed. Exactly, exactly. Hedron, how long has it been out now? Two weeks and it's starting to pump, which is great. It's great to see Hedron pump and also Hex pump. And I saw Chad Jenkins uh, on his stream earlier saying that maybe Hedron is the um, Robin, you know, to Batman. Hex being the Batman. So very great to see Richard Hart projects or Richard Hart projects in the ecosystem. I know Hedron isn't a Richard Hart project, but it's in the ecosystem, in the green and pumping. Uh, Ray Fee says, how do we transfer to fiat if we never sell? So how do you transfer to fiat? So what you do is you'd have Pulse, you'd put it from your wallet into a vault, you'd mint yourself USDL, and you take that USDL to an exchange and exchange it for fiat. Now, straight away, there probably won't be a direct fiat off-ramp. So you'd have to take that to a bridge, bridge over to Ethereum, and then send that to an exchange. Of course, there's not going to be a bridge. And then there'll be a bridge forever. But after a while, there will be direct on and off fiat ramps. And it will be as easy as pulse from your wallet into a vault, mint yourself USDL, USDL to an exchange, and then change it into US dollars, pounds, euros, wherever you are in the world. Um, that's the game of crypto, right? It's very rare that you have one crypto and straight away it's into um, into fiat. It's normally swapping to a few things. And before the fiat on and off ramps, yes, there will be, you will need the bridge to Ethereum or to other blockchains to get out. But again, it's just a few more steps. You lock Pulse in the vault and mint stable coin, swap the stable into ETH, X into fiat. Exacto mondo. Uh, that's a taxable event. No, not if you're swapping a stable coin for stable coin. In fact, it might even be, you might even lose a bit of value just as slippage, right? So stable coin to stable coin is not a taxable event. Obviously, I don't know where you live. You have to check in your jurisdiction and with a tax advisor. But in most jurisdictions, stable coin for stable coin is not a taxable event. Now, if you're swapping uh, into something like Pulse to ETH or into another asset like hex then depending on the price that may be a taxable event but i'm not a tax advisor and i'm not giving any financial advice you have to check with uh, the jurisdiction you live in and you also have to obviously check with your tax advisor hexicat says loans are not taxable and your pulse is, is still locked in the contract the swap could be but what is the net gain for swapping one dollar for one dollar it would be zero capital gains exactly so to reiterate what hexicat is saying the Again, you have to check in your jurisdiction of the world, but most places in the world, uh, debt isn't taxed. So there's no debt, there's no capital gains tax on a loan. And of course, swapping stablecoin for stablecoin, there's no net gain on that. So there would be, there should be no tax. Uh, R23 says, here's a stupid question. What if Pulse Chain never launches? Does the sacrificed amount get refunded? Again, sorry for the stupid question. Well, questions like, I mean, you know, no, it's a good question, but questions like these are what we call imaginary horribles. Why would Pulse Chain never launch? And also people sacrificed with nothing. Um, remember, you sacrificed 
without expecting what any anything from the profit of work of others. So you made a sacrifice just like you made for maybe Pulse Chain, just like you made for PulseX and for Liquid Loans and for anything. There's other sacrifice phases going on in the Pulse Chain ecosystem right now. And I'm sure they all, all have uh, the same, they can't all, all come under the same umbrella. When you sacrifice, you don't expect anything in return, but you may be airdropped some tokens that have no value. So if Pulse Chain never launches, of course, that's an imaginary horrible, but then where do we stop with the imaginary horribles? Maybe Russia invades the UK. Maybe they, they put a nuclear bomb in, in, in America. You know what I mean? Where do we stop? So if Pulse Chain never launches, of course, we don't know what could happen. Are we on the, are we on the verge of World War Three? Who knows? Okay, it's an imaginary horrible. At the moment, Pulse Chain is very close, as Richard Hart said yesterday. They're on track. Pulse X is done. You know, they've got that uh, new test net coming out soon. So we're on track. Everything is going good behind the scenes here. And I think that uh, let's not delve too much into imaginary horribles and let's stay on track. Richard just did a live stream yesterday and it seems like stuff is uh, happening behind the scenes. Uh, okay. Which countries do you mean? I took a loan to sacrifice a pulse chain thinking it was two months away. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, things take longer. Uh, software is hard and uh, things take longer. So, of course, we're all here waiting with bated breath for, you know, pulse chain to come out. Because obviously this isn't just like hex that sits on top of Ethereum. Pulse chain is a substrate. We need pulse chain to come out so liquid loans can come out. So Hedron can come out. So all these all these other protocols that are going to be on there can be built and, you know, all the users can uh, start to see how this is working. So until that comes out, of course, we're all waiting here. And I understand, like, it's been a long time, but we all want it done properly, right? Fairly local says, why would Pulse not launch? RH has already said that where they're, where they're at with the development, Roblox happening software doesn't mean it stops the launch. Exactly. So I think with Hex, they were delayed a year, maybe two. I wasn't in the ecosystem then. But patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. And exactly, you can't have any expectations, guys. So if you made a sacrifice, it was, was sacrifice for a political cause. And you agree with that political cause. And again, you may or may not be airdrop tokens when the uh, when Pulse Chain goes live and when Liquid Loans goes live. Um, Miyamoto, great work, my man, you're killing it. Thank you very much, Compounding. Uh, people forget, no expectations. <laughs> okay, so just reading through some of these comments. So just like, just to reiterate what I said, we are at 45 million and $420,000 at the moment which is, it's just, it's just great to see people coming in with all sizes of bags. You've got the Godwell came in with, I think, nearly 6 million US dollars. You've got people sacrificing $50, $40. And it doesn't matter how big your bag is. If you're in this ecosystem already, you're ahead of the curve. You're learning. Obviously, you've probably learned from the Richard Hart ecosystem about delayed gratification. It really is the key in every area, right? And it's not just finances. You know, if you look in life, fractal patterns exist anywhere and whether you're learning a new language whether you're learning you want to get fitter you want to learn a new subject at, at university whatever life skill finances everything is is delayed gratification of course have some people circumnavigated the system yeah you might hear some oh, i'm becoming a millionaire from doge or shiva overnight but let's be honest most people are putting their money to work for them in good protocols and now that we can do this on the blockchain with pulse with liquid loans where you can lock up you can stake you can collect you know yield on that or you can collect you know with the loan token you're actually getting the fees so jex did a great video on this he did a great video on and if anyone doesn't know who jexer is i think his channel is uh, jexer hex uh, or, or um hex safe and he works for liquid loans he's head of it and security and he did a whole channel on called One DeFi, and how if you're owning all parts of this new ecosystem, Pulse Chain, the substrate, Liquid Loans, the central bank, PulseX, the exchange, and 
you have obviously Pulse Chain, the actual, um, and Hex, you have the savings account. And you're putting that all to work for you before. I talked about this in a video the other day with Randy and with just HODL. The only choices you had in crypto was buy and hold, HODL, and trade. Now, most people don't want to buy and hold because it's boring, right? Even though you look at someone like the God Whale who changed or turned three and a half thousand dollars into like 300 million over seven years with about a handful of a handful of maneuvers, a handful of trades. Most people can't do that. They want to do something. And I get that. That's human nature. We want to be busy. You want to feel like you're doing something. So what you do is you might go down the trade, the route of trading or leverage trading and end up getting wrecked. Randy talked about this before where he lost like seven Bitcoin in one day. So they were the options before. HODL, which most people couldn't do, maybe the odd person like the Godwell, or trading where most people get wrecked, I myself included. Now we have a different complete ecosystem with DeFi 2.0 and especially Pulse Chain with hardly, you know, fees that are going to be pennies for staking and, and buying and swapping. You're going to have great assets, which over time are probably going to have great price appreciation up and to the right. Of course, it's going to be very choppy at first, you know, or people are going to be trading in and out. But over time, and crypto's, crypto can be volatile. Over time, though, if you look at any chart of Hex, Bitcoin, Ethereum, for example, good, solid crypto projects, they go up and to the right. So you're going to get the price appreciation most likely if you've got diamond hands, but you can also put that money to work for you. You can take your pulse and put it into the liquid loans protocol, get USDL stablecoin, go out into the real world or buy other assets, maybe real estate, maybe other cryptos. You can stake those cryptos if they're hex or something. You can, if you've got pulse X, you can stake that. If you've got pulse, you can stake that with a validator as well as using the liquid loans protocol. If you've got the loan token, you can put that in the staking pool. The opportunities are endless. And that's why the community started coming up with their own protocols. Like, like I said, Hexicat, Haunted, Hodpro, Red Squirrel, The Long Vacation, because the opportunities and the, the ways that you can do this are kind of like infinite, depending on, depending on what you want to do. So in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is not only are you going to have good price appreciation over time, of course, it goes up and down, it's crypto, but you're also putting this stuff to work for you. It really, really is exciting. It's not just about you know, buying SHIB or buying a meme coin, hoping it goes up. If if you did that, fantastic. Most people didn't do that, right? They got they, they got in at the top and they got wrecked. Here, we've got that mindset, which has been drilled in from the Richard Hart ecosystem, delayed gratification. And then by delaying your gratification, like locking up your hex, locking up your loan token, locking up your pulse X, taking a loan with liquid loans, and then maybe providing stability, Again, price appreciation with yield generating assets really is DeFi 2.0. And it really, really is something that, you know, is super exciting about 2022. I know everyone is, you know, I, I'm, I'm the same as you guys, right? I'm impatient. I want, I want Pulse Chain here now. I want to get, I want to get to work, right? I want to get to, to play around with the ecosystem. Unfortunately, we have to be patient, but, you know, patient rewards um you know people who are patient in good things obviously are rewarded so by being patient for pulse chain and then when you get into pulse chain hopefully you have a good position in good assets if you don't obviously you can buy on dips you can find good entries and with these yield generating assets put it to work for you and you're going to be generating income and like i said at the beginning of this stream there's two tokens that i never want to sell number one pulse because i believe in it cheaper faster more efficient more environmentally friendly, better version of Ethereum. I mean, how popular is Ethereum? And I know the gas fees have gone down because it looks like we're in a, some sort of bear market, semi-bear market. But, you know, before when gas fees were at the ultimate high, you were looking at $100 a swap on Uniswap or Matcha. That's insane. We're going to have pennies on that. And it's going to be the same code. It's going to be the full system state copy that I haven't talked about. So that's going to bring all people over the SHIB community, the NFT community, the chain link community, for example, there's many more. And you've got that. So there's pulse. I never want to sell. How do you do that? You use liquid loans. You lock up your pulse in a smart contract. You safely collateralize and you get liquidity through USDL, take that into the real world, spend it, or maybe go and buy, buy some other assets. And my second pick is going to be the loan token because there's no time lock on it, like a timeless T-share. We stick that 
in the loan staking pool and we get all the fees in the system, right? Anytime somebody comes into the system and opens a loan up, if you're in the staking pool, you're part of the central bank, you're going to cut that fee. Every time somebody comes to redeem USD Alpha Pulse, there's a fee, you're going to get part of that fee. So it really is a beautiful system and you can go in there once a day, once a week, multiple times a day and, you know, collect your fees. Gas is going to be pennies. It's going to be beautiful and I'm very excited about it. So I thought I'd jump on there and talk about this. Arnold says, Jex is amazing. He made Liquid Loans so simple. Highly recommend seeing all his videos on Liquid Loans. Hashtag we love Jex. Jex is the man. Like he's, when I first came across Jexa on the Discord Syndicate channel with the Aussies, you know, I just like listening to him because he's calm, he's methodical. He's the opposite of, you know, if you go into other crypto channels and it's like pump and dump and emojis and, you know, meme coins, he's like the opposite of that. He's calm, he's methodical, he thinks things through. And when you watch his videos, he explains things. It's a great balance because it's very simplified. So for normies uh, like us, we can understand it, but it's also, it goes deep, but not in like, he loses you. So it's very simple. So for anyone, I think it's uh, Hex Safe is his channel. Please go and uh, check, check him out. Okay, actually, let me, while I'm here, let me see if I can get it up and see if, if I can put it in the chat because, uh, yep, I think it's, I think it's Hex Safe is his channel. Hexa Hex Safe, yes. So let me drop this in the chat right now. Um, and you guys can subscribe to his channel, watch all his videos. Jexa is the best. Matt and Russ, Nanda from Dubai, a loan is credit, not a debit, exactly. Okay, so lots of discussion going on in the in the chat. Cool, cool, cool. Hey Matt, who decides the 0.5 to 5% fees from taking a loan? When would you have to pay more than 0.5%? So when opening a loan or opening a new vault, most of the time it will be 0.5%, half a percent. But depending on the health of the system, it could ratchet up to 5%. And that would be to disincentivize you to take a loan because then the system is lowly collateralized and it would want more people to pay back loans. So it's very clever. The system is obviously is running by code. It's you and the code. And the code wants to be safely over collateralized. It wants to look for a total, a TCR, a total collateral, collateral ratio of around about 150%. But of course, if, if it drops below that, then it goes into recovery mode, which I, I don't think uh, the fork liquidity has even been in, or maybe just once at the beginning of the protocol. But when it gets obviously down to lowly collateralized, it's going to disincentivize people taking loans because obviously the more loans are taken, there's more debt in the system. So most of the time, it's going to be that half a percent. If the system sounds, if the system is going, is, is, on the lower collateral side, it may ratchet up that fee to disincentivize people to take a loan and incentivize people to pay back their loan and therefore bring that total collateral ratio back to a safe um, a safe ratio. Cool, cool. You got it. Fantastic. All right, guys. Well, I thought I'd just jump on 35 mins, solo one, quickie on a Thursday night. Um, like I said, just to reiterate what I said, I think that there's two tokens that I never want to sell. And that is going to be my pulse and my loan token. Also, the sacrifice phase, we're coming into the last week soon. Of course, we're in that bonding curve where the rate gets 5% worse every single day, but you can still claw that back by locking up for a certain amount of time between one and 24 months. Every month you lock up, you get 6% um, extra on your coin count each day. And on the last one, you get the last month, you get 12%, meaning if you locked up for 24 months, you'd get up to 2.5x on your coin count. Okay. So that's quite interesting because in crypto, you want to get into a good project, hopefully, and then increase your coin count over time. Uh, that if you look at the smart money, that's what they do. So for any more info on the sacrifice, do head over to the sacrifice.io. If you do have any questions, jump into our telegram chat, t.me forward slash liquid loans. Our superstar uh, mods and admins are there every single day answering your questions. So do jump in there with any questions. I'll be back at some point. I think this weekend I'll be streaming with Jesse. He's been away, but he'll be back 
and we'll be taking your questions and talking more about the liquid loans protocol, Pulse Chain, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Good night. Peace.